in a minute we'll be trying to bend the railing that has to go around this little part right here. And uh, what I wanted to mention first before I forget is that uh, in the comments from yesterday's video somebody had mentioned that they had made themselves a photo etch cutter uh, similar to what I have here and what what I want to mention is that if I was to do it again and I and I can still do this and I probably will maybe is that uh, this blade could be narrower it doesn't have to be uh, right now I've measured it it's just a hair over two millimeters wide I'm thinking that likely one millimeter would be a lot better um, and if I can find something on here, like I believe one of these, I might be able to uh, use as an example to show you why a wide blade doesn't work really well in some in some instances on the photo etch sheet. I'm going to slip the macro lens on so I can show you here. Now here is that same blade before I cut it down. I believe it's a number 18 blade. And what I'm getting at is that if you wanted to get this little piece here, number 50, this one right here that I'm just touching, well, you couldn't use this blade unless you were to come in at, a, at an angle like this. So in other words, the, the narrower the better on something really small. And here on the number 54, uh, okay, where's, where's my real cutter here? All right. I, I haven't noticed it so much too much on these sheets, but I do remember when I was doing the Bismarck, there was one that I, that this blade here was even too wide to get in. And, uh, and, and like this one here, number, number 54, like we don't, we don't want to cut right there. We want to leave this little piece on right there. And that's where we want to cut. And, and there's just barely enough room there. Okay, you see what I'm talking about? And there's, there's some places where, for instance, if, if this number 50, 50 here was, was larger, uh, you're, the blade would have to be back so far that it wouldn't fit in the circle. Um, this is maybe not the best example, but it's all that I could quickly find here. So in other words, I would make the blade, instead of 2 millimeters wide, make it just 1 millimeter wide. And now I, I, I can easily adjust it. I could probably, I've got a file right here at the model table I could probably just take the edge down and make it narrower. It, it doesn't have to be perfectly square uh, like the blade itself. Anyway, uh, enough of this. So after I took that shot I was thinking to myself why don't I narrow it down? Why, you know I don't even have to stand up. The, uh, this, this file right here is right beside me and uh, more or less. And yeah, truthfully I didn't have to stand up. Uh, where am I going with this now? So what I wanted to mention is that a person would have a tendency to, to want to just uh, put the uh, grinding wheel on their Dremel tool, which is also right beside me, and just quickly grind that down. That would be the easiest way to do it. The problem is you have to watch out for heat. Uh, you don't want this thing to get red hot or, or even really hot. And, uh, and the heat will sort of anneal the metal. In other words, it will soften the blade and it will um, dull on you a lot, a lot faster. Um, now I know we're just cutting little brass tabs of photo etch, but, but still you want to try and keep the steel as, fa as, as, uh, as hard as you can. And when I was grinding this blade down in my workshop, grinding this part out, uh, I was, uh, constantly dipping this thing into cold water. I, 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 I would grind for maybe two seconds, dip it in water. Grind for another two seconds, dip it in water. And I probably did that 30 or 40 times to, 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 to get it the way you see it. And as near as I can tell, I did not, uh, I did not take the hardness out of, the, out of the blade, or at least very little. Um, I'm not, I'm not uh, you know, into making knives and stuff like that. I, I do know of a fellow who uh, he, who was over here in my workshop, and he would he would make knives out of old files because the file was so hard. And he was talking about how to you had to heat it and and then you know uh, stuff that I don't know anything about. All I do know is that 
if I was to heat this blade, uh, even with, with my little cigarette lighter here, my Bic lighter that I use for, <clears throat> excuse me, burning the, the photo etch off of my applicator, uh, that would be hot enough to, to uh, spoil the steel. Okay, I tend to ramble on and on, so let's just see what, what can I do here now. I, I haven't tried it yet, but I'm, I'm sure that this file should be hard, a lot harder than this steel, even though the steel is hardened. But it's not, it's not this hard. Maybe it's harder than I thought. Okay, I'm just going to work at this for a while and uh, we'll look at it when I'm done. Now I have not uh, measured it yet, so I don't know how much we've taken it down. It's it's noticeably less. Um, I, I realize that, you know, up up across here, there's very little difference. But down on the end of the of the blade, where the cutting is actually done, where I have to try and get it to fit into a little narrow piece on the photo etch fret, uh, it, you know, we've we've narrowed it out. I'm going to try and angle everything around here so we can. Um, just measure just across right at the cutting edge there. That's the, the part that counts. Okay, now this is set to millimeters. And uh, all we want to do is just measure just the, the blade part that's going to do the cutting. And, and it, it was it was just a little over uh, two millimeters before. Okay, so it looks to me like it is about 1.6 millimeters. Uh, this this thing here only measures to a, a hundredth of a millimeter. My other one will go to a thousandth of a millimeter, but I mean we don't need to be getting ridiculous here. Let's give it one more, one more uh, Yeah, 1.7 millimeters. So I've taken it down to about half of what it was before. And I think that's going to be a lot more uh, effective for cutting photo etch. Now I do realize that because the the uh, area of the cutter is so much less than it was before, um, there is there is a greater chance of, of dulling it, but uh, I'll be careful. Sure, I'll be careful, no problem. I was sort of thinking a minute ago that I was kind of sorry now in step 39 here. I we, we got all the photo etch and then I realized, no, we still got to get this one little piece down here for 39. So I guess we can maybe try this thing out yet today. We'll see how it goes. But um, in the meantime, let's try and uh, bend our railing here to uh, the correct diameter to go around the outside of this piece, how, how not the outside, but I think it lays. I think it lays on the deck part. I'm not sure now. Yeah, it would. Lay, it would lay on the deck. Um, now, uh, I think that before we actually glue this on, though, we might do well to paint this. But we can go ahead and at least and get the the right diameter that we need here. I've just got a. Uh, uh, a steel dowel here. It's, I don't know what the dimension is. I just grabbed one at random out of my set of dowels. Okay, now, okay, I'm going to want it to bend. Maybe I should reposition everything so that you can see what I'm doing here. Um, if I find that, uh, let me double check and make sure I've got it the right way up. Yeah, I want it so that the posts will be on the outside of the rail. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. Maybe maybe I should be having it the other way. I don't know. Anyway, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to see if this doll is going to be... Uh, uh, small enough, and I, I can tell already that it is. Okay, let's just uh, check this out and see if we have to do any more. 
you know what I should maybe put this in a in a clothes pin well this will do there that'll hold it up I'm just going to reposition the camera so I can <clears throat> excuse me come in a little closer now I can see by eyeballing it here that the uh, radius is just a little bit too too large here I think I haven't even tried it yet so what am I talking about yeah you can I want to get it so that it'll be just sort of sitting there all by itself without uh, having to be squeezed one way or the other okay so I think that if I pick this up I don't want to squeeze too hard because if I do it will have a tendency to open itself now let's just take this Dell here maybe I can just do it right on my on my green cloth just sort of tighten the radius up on this half of it here okay push down let's try that when I got this green cloth from from uh, Amazon or towel rather um, they had different sh different colors and I should I do believe they had a gray, but I thought that the gray was, was just too dark. But if I could get something that was more of a, a neutral density color, it wouldn't throw my uh, color correction off like the uh, white balance. Maybe a different pair of tweezers. Let's try these ones. I wanted to use the other ones because I, I didn't want to scratch it. That was the that was the plan. You know, I think I gotta make the radius just a tiny bit tighter. Just a little bit. I'm trying to do this so that you can see what I'm doing. You know, gotta have this thing at right angles to the to the to the dull because if I don't it will uh, sort of bend in, in sort of a like a helix or something. Okay, let's, let's try that, see if I made a difference. Yeah, that, that's going to be all right. So, okay, we did that one. I'll just make, uh, there, there's actually two of these pedestal things. And and one of those guns that we that we made yesterday is supposed to go right here. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead now and, and do the other one the same way. Did you did you notice on, on this thing here, uh, you see it right there, the uh, paint from the, from the uh, railing, has come off on this thing. It, it was a it was a real mistake, not using the Stanol Res primer. I, I should have uh, made the effort and and just fought with my airbrush. Okay, this one here is the second one that I just just finished making, and this is my first try. Yeah, I don't think that's going to take too much adjusting. Maybe, maybe tighten it up just a little bit here and a little bit here. Um, I'm noticing there is no railing or anything right here. I think in all likelihood on the real ship there would have been something right from here to here. Unless maybe there was a, a maybe a ladder. Yeah, maybe there's supposed to be a ladder there. That makes sense. Uh, anyway, we won't worry about it. Okay, now, this piece of photo etch is already bent for us, 
and I can understand why because I think it would be almost impossible to bend something in a curve like this without you know kinking or let's see here now if we check the manual it appears that this piece of photo etch is supposed to come up from the bottom now probably uh, <clears throat> zoomed away back where you are you can't see it but there's a little bit of a lip there and I do believe that this thing is supposed to come up against that lip so it, it makes sense to me that we uh, have this part upside down probably not up not all the way down on the green cloth because if we do undoubtedly what's going to happen is the uh, when I try to CA glue it in place it'll get glued to the cloth so I'm going to have to uh, put this up on top of something so I'm going to do that and just uh, reposition and we'll uh, see what we can do Nope. Okay, I think we got the right idea here. Probably has to go down just a little bit further. I'm going to just sort of reposition myself here so I can see better. Now I think what I'll do is I'll just adhere it down on one one side like this. We'll swing it around. If, if you notice when we get to the halfway mark it's pretty much in the right place. And then we'll adhere it down right here. And I'm, I'm going to use the uh, CA th uh, Thin so it can sort of wick its way along. <clears throat> Try and get this at the right angle for the light so that you can see what's happening. So that I can see what's happening. Okay, now let's let's hope that it doesn't catch on the uh, applicator and just I'm going to push it in a little bit if I can here. Mm. Got to be careful that I don't push it off with the applicator. OK. 
Okay, now I think that once that cures, it'll stick on there pretty good. Now the idea is to do the same thing on this side, and then it shouldn't go flying off. Whoops. Okay, let's just leave that. Now, I'm just going to test it here, see if it lifts up all by itself, sort of. No, that's, that's adhered. And so is that one. Okay, let's just do some in the middle now. Now it's my hope that this is going to sort of wick its way along that little lip that this thing is resting on. I can well imagine that uh, when we paint it, unless I... Maybe I put too much on there. That the paint will also act as a glue. Now, I, I can't see it wicking along, but maybe you can. Okay, I, w I would think uh, we've got a bit of a blob going on right here. Let's see if I can get rid of that. There. Yeah, I don't see it quite as bad now. In fact, I don't see it at all. Now, from the top side, it actually doesn't look too bad. I'm going to have to remember now that I just can't grab hold of it with my fingers. And, well, if I do, I have to push extremely delicately because this thing will just flatten right out, as you can imagine. All right. One of the viewers asked me, how many power is your macro lens? And uh, it's kind of hard to describe. I, I guess... Uh, uh, it might get a little bit technical here. Uh, most macro lenses, like I've got right here, for uh, DSLRs or an SLR, uh, are what's are one to one. Um, don't know if you can read it, but it, it says one to one right there. And uh, that means that that something that is uh, Okay, like this coin, for instance. If I have this lens set to its closest focusing distance, this coin will be the same size on the camera sensor as it is in real life. Okay, in other words, it's it's one-to-one. -one. That's where they get the one-to-one -one from. Um, so how many power it would be then would depend on what what kind of monitor you're you're uh, viewing it on like uh, for instance right now this this coin would probably on the sensor be about the size of a a, a small dinner plate on, on the screen there um, yeah about that size it probably I'm guessing about seven seven eight inches in, in diameter on the screen so it, it all depends on what you're watching it on now, if you're watching it on, on your, that, that entire screen on your cell phone, it might be only, uh, oh, you know, five, five times uh, real size. But if you're watching it like, like my neighbor next door who's got a 70-inch 4K TV, he's going to be watching that same in, image uh, a, a huge amount bigger. And so he might be watching it at maybe, maybe 50 power. So it, it depends on what what you are uh, viewing it on as to the as to the power. 
Otherwise, you might as well just say this lens is just one power. Now, my Super Macro, on the other hand, which is much smaller, and the reason it's a lot smaller is because it, it doesn't have a whole bunch of stuff in it that you don't need. Like, uh, th this has a, a, a gyro system in it to, for stabilization. Uh, it's, it's got uh, uh, auto-focusing, auto and it's got so it's got the autofocusing mechanism in there. So it's it's big and clunky, but it doesn't really have to be that big. It could be small like this, or even smaller uh, if it was designed differently. So, so, but this super macro is is five to one. So when it's at its at its maximum or its best, so uh, you might say it's a five power. So this would be one power. This would be five power. And that's the way it goes. But this this is this lens is completely manual. You have to set everything manual. And quite honestly, I I prefer that. Uh, I I sort of grew up with that, and I can understand it. And it it's sort of second nature to me. Um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so for that viewer that wanted to know, you know how how much power is is my ma our macro lens that we used so much in the last. Uh, what, 600 and something episodes? Uh, it's one power. I'm afraid we're gonna have to wait until tomorrow to try out our new blade at the new width. We've kind of run out of time here and once again in order to have fun doing this I want to be able to take my time. So thanks for watching everybody and all being well we'll see you tomorrow.